Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalaran and patch 9.1 should be hitting PTR very, very soon. In fact, next week. We don't really know if it's Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday, but you will be surely notified on this channel once we have some changes to explore. And patch 9.1 is something that a lot of players are excited for, and we'll be taking a pretty close look and a detailed look whenever the servers go live. However, while waiting for patch 9.1, I've been mulling over some of the things that need to be done right by Blizzard, and I wanted to put this list together. All the different systems or aspects or parts of 9.1 that I talked about during BlizzCon that I think need to be done right in order for this patch to be fantastic. There's a lot of good ideas into patch 9.1 and a lot of new things that Blizzard is going to be rolling out, but I have my own ideas as to how they should roll out all of these different systems and events into the game. Starting off, we're going to talk about the Maw. It isn't a place that players are really excited to go into, and the Maw is going to get a pretty big revamp. It's going to have a new zone attached to the Maw, still part of the Maw, but its own zone called Korthia. Korthia is brand new, we know nothing about it, except that it will have a lot of story and Red Lords involved. So, already I'm pretty excited, but because it's brand new, I can't really comment about it. The Maw, however, is going to go through a lot of changes that already sound good on paper. Blizzard is going to make it a lot more friendlier, so you can use your own mounts besides the Maw mounts in order to traverse it. And it'll be structured what sounds similar to Najatar of Battle for Azeroth, maybe Mechagon, or even Timeless Isle if you played it back in Mesa Pandaria. That's kind of like a zone where you go in, you can kill rares and do events and get a bunch of collectibles. And there's a lot of collectibles they're adding into the Maw, which I think is a good thing. This is going to be a nice transition of how the Maw is right now, as like this place that doesn't want you there, to now you're kind of hanging out on the Maw and you're exploring it like an extra zone. I'm hoping there will be a lot of goodies and secrets in every corner of the Maw, maybe even some secret quests and secret toys and secret items that you can find as you explore this whole place, because most people don't really go past where their dailies tell them to go to. The one thing that wasn't talked much is what Venari is going to do in the Maw, and they said this the Venari is still going to play some sort of a play in terms of player power and player progression. Right now it is in terms of Stygia, which is super unfun to farm. You can only farm it in the Maw. If you die in the Maw, you lose half your Stygia. Some of the enemies can be quite challenging, especially when they're in many, many packs, and they can also be quite punishing as well. So I'm hoping that whatever they do in the Maw, if they do keep the difficulty of the Maw, definitely take away some of the RNG from Venari. For example, if they want to keep Venari as like a vendor for you to be able to get higher level conduits, if let's say whatever currency you'll be farming in 9.1, in the maw i think they should maybe take away the rng of that because right now you just buy an item and it upgrades one of your current conduits that isn't 226 item level to one higher level but it's a random conduit i feel like what they should do is allow players if they do add similar system less rng from venari if you are going to keep it as grindy as it is right now make it easier for players to focus in on exactly what they want so at the end of the run they can just ex get exactly what they like if they're trying out a different build or trying out a different class and they need certain conduits, it'll be a much nicer change if they are keeping a similar system. Next is going to be Torghast. I'm a huge fan of the early version of Torghast, especially when they had the endless version, and I'm kind of sad that they took it out. For some of the updates Torghast is getting in patch 9.1, first of all, the Tarogru, the big metal armor dude that kicks you out of Torghast when you die too many times, that guy is going to be gone. Could that signal potentially that they're going to be revamping how Torghast is going to be played? Maybe with a different system instead of like three deaths and you're out. Maybe could they implement a roguelike elements that they really talked about back during the early version of the game. Continuing on with the updates, they're going to add more layers as well as new wings to explore. And they're going to be thematic as well, so the more the merrier in my opinion. They also said there may be a rating or a score system depending on how well you do your runs. It'd be cool if you could see like an in-game leaderboard in the game, in World of Warcraft, and you could just look at the leaderboards in terms of who is doing the best, kind of how you can look at the leaderboards in Diablo and see how well people do their rifts. They also said that they might actually give you partial rewards for completing floors even if you don't finish the run. But what if Blizzard changed it so that the run could never be finished? Technically, every run is an unlimited run, and you can just keep going until eventually the game just squeezes on you so much that you cannot go further. As in, you actually can't complete the run, and you keep going in levels over and over and over and over and over until you get slapped and you get rewards based on how well you've done previous floors. I think this would be a really good idea to use all the roguelike stuff in there to add to the game. This would be the perfect time to do it and give it a revamp. I had so much fun with the endless or quote unquote endless mode of the early alpha, early beta of the game when it comes to Torghast. And I think if they were to bring it back in, it would be so cool. 
especially since they're also going to be adding more anima power so potentially new builds i really would love to have so many different builds and so many different powers where i don't see the same build three or four runs in a row i also think blizzard should rethink how soul ash works in terms of the runs right now torgas is structured to get your layer aids done for two hallways and you're good for the week which doesn't take long at all, but I think it could be at least more fun. I think they gotta add some kind of other avenue for Soul Ash in terms of how you earn it. Maybe make it similar to AP and have it where you can earn it from other resources as well. Maybe make it so you can earn it from the Maw itself and the events in the Maw. Or you can go to Torgas and get a couple runs done. Or maybe you can even do your callings and get your soul ash that way add more avenues for players to be able to get it in any way they want to whether they want to do it over a week or if they want to do it in a single sitting grind i also think it would be cool if they were to add soul ash to let's say an endless mode if they add an endless mode imagine if you could earn soul ash while working on your twists and corridors whether you end the run poorly or end the run great you still would be able to keep the amount of soul ash you earn based on how many levels of twists and corridors you completed so while you're still working for your mount, you're also getting the soul ash you need on the side. So not only are you going to twist and corridors to get the mount, and then we'd have to go to the, do the normal Torgas stuff, you just would be hanging out on Torgas and doing activities and earning soul ash passively. I think a system like that would probably be better, and adding more ways to play with Torgas, more fun ways, I think would also go a long way. Covenants is another aspect that's going to be getting some changes. First of all, we know there's going to be more renown, so there's going to be more to do, which I think is a good thing. More cosmetics, maybe even a bit more player power and renown, and there's going to be a lot of renown. I believe they said they want to add 40 more levels of renown, so instead of getting capped out at 40, you will be capped out at 80. This is awesome for my main. There'll be more for me to do, more events for me to complete, and I'll be doing it by week by week basis. Keeping up with one character is not difficult at all. However, this is Shadowlands, and we were promised that also going to be easier to play. Renowned catch-up right now isn't the worst. I really do wish it was a little bit quicker since I have so many alts to play, and there's quite a lot of renown to get. But it's still not super, super slow just yet. However, once the cap is going to be 80, catching up all of your alts is going to be a bit of a pain. I really think they should expand more activities for you to get renowned. What if they had it so that killing certain rares inside of the Maw after the 9.1 revamps gives you renown? Or maybe even certain world quests can give you renown so you can really catch up super quick. And maybe allow players to catch up to a certain level. So let's say if you're two, three weeks behind, you can basically blast through all these rares in the Maw and catch up to renown. Or slay every so many players in BG and you get a bit of renown here, a bit of renown there. Maybe every single dungeon boss in a heroic starts dropping your renown so you can really grind through it pretty quickly. But why would you need all that renown, you may be asking? That's because there's going to be changes to the covenants themselves. Power levels of lesser use covenant class combinations will be increased. That means that we'll be getting so many more buffs left and right for any of the covenant combos. So if you always wanted to play a Necrolord Druid or maybe a Kyrian Mage or... I don't know, a Venthyr Warlock, a combo that I don't think I've ever seen except for one time. And all those possibilities, theoretically, should be viable in patch 9.1 if Blizzard does a good enough job getting them pretty close. Like if they can just get them to how close rogue abilities are and rogue covenants are so close to one another, it's actually not even funny. Imagine if you had that kind of level of customizability. You still will have strong metas, but the difference won't be like a thousand DPS difference. It'll be like maybe between 70 to 200, which is a decent ballpark. I mean, imagine if you're a paladin, you love Kyrian, but the Night Fate just gets churned up in damage and it's absolutely fantastic. Everybody's re-rolling. You're going to need all that renown. So setting up for easier ways and faster ways, way faster ways to grind out renown, I don't think is a bad thing. Letting players grind out and fast track to the covenant they want to isn't a terrible thing at all. And I don't really see a reason as to why you would gate it. They also want to address covenant switching. And the only thing I'd say about covenant switching is maybe if that allowed players, if you can't grind out renown quickly maybe like transfer your renown transfer the level from one covenant to another maybe once you reach a level 40 then you can switch to any other covenants at level 40 maybe that could be a way for people to switch much easier but we still don't know if they're gonna do anything like that just yet they're gonna add more sources of anima so if you guys were excited to get anima for all your different covenant upgrades for your sanctums that'll also be heard and we also got changes to soul binds and conduits 
one, new conduits and powers will be added as in more ways for you to play your character, not just potency, endurance and finesse. We don't really know much about it. And that definitely needs to be dissected once it's live on the PTL servers. They also want to add empowered conduits in patch 9.1 as in make a conduit much, much stronger or give it extra side effects. So that could be really cool. Again, nothing we can really comment about right now. I like where they're going. I like how they're expanding the system. It's a system that works that doesn't need to be redefined and redesigned, kind of like how some of the BFA systems were. So not much you can say about it. We'll have to wait for this one until it's up on PTR. Next is going to be PVP. And with PVP, one of the things I talked about is, first of all, honor, talent, refresh change up some of the honor challenges that nobody ever plays i'm pretty sure you can pinpoint a class maybe even a spec that has some honor challenges that are kind of dead in the water and by that i mean there's not a lot of situations where you would use those honor talents like there's not enough situations in pvp where you're like oh that would be really useful and i'm not talking about honor talents where it's like you're a paladin and then you see a warlock on the enemy team for arenas and you're like okay there's this one specific honor talent i don't use it often but i am going to use it because that's a warlock now that's an example of a useful honor talent not super useful but it is still useful the ones that are useless are the ones that you don't can't even think of a wildest dreams that okay in this x fantastic scenario would i ever have a use for this on a talent or that on a talent so this is really really good and also blizzard talked about potentially doing scaling for pvp gear so scaling i think i just want to wait to see exactly what this system will look like a lot of us didn't really like scaling of legion or battle for azeroth scaling in pvp just didn't really work out all that well but maybe they end up doing something different the scaling that will work better this time but definitely want to take a look at it once it comes out not much you can really say as of this moment class changes and one of the biggest things that i really think we should get are shadow priest-esque changes at the beginning of shadowlands shadow priests were a shell of the former class losing all the essences and corruptions and trinkets and the gear of battle for azeroth once all that stuff vanished the spec was a shell of its former self it felt very sluggish to play it felt like it didn't have any cool procs to play off of it just felt behind all the other classes that held those new abilities coming back in and all these new play styles that they could explore and it's not even the question of does the spec do damage shadow priests were actually doing pretty decent damage prior but they felt just awful to play they just weren't super fun when it comes to the gameplay so then blizzard added dp devouring plague the ability we get to play with right now as a priest it didn't do a lot of damage but it was a lot more fun to play i mean there was quite a lot of priests that literally played with devouring plague even though it didn't do nearly as much damage people just pressed it and tried to make builds around it it was an extra damage over time ability for you to maintain and trying to see how often you can maintain it on a boss was just fun blizzard took notice of it and decided hey let's make it your main insanity filler void form became a cooldown like the community requested but then they took it an extra step useless mastery got changed to a useful one and the mastery now pumps it's actually really good it became from one of your worst stats to one of your better ones and it actually is really good depending if you're a single target aoe or cleave it changes and with scaling it's going to scale even better then you have your damage over time abilities and your dots are not there just for damage your dots are also there to give you procs for different abilities like your mind blast can be an instant cast proc but the only way you get it is by putting dots on enemies and then using mind flay or mind seer and every time it ticks for every dot that's out on enemy for every pain as well as a vt that's out you have a chance to make your mind blast instant and usable while you are channeling your mind flay so it's really cool mechanic really speeds up the play style and the procs just kind of fire off at you very quickly if you can maintain multiple dots on enemies then they took an aspect of rng where the priest would love a ton of crit towards the later of the expansion because the more crit you had the higher chance you had to have shadowy apparition spawn which kind of acted like a extra dot it basically would have these spirits fly towards enemies and do damage they repurpose it completely where every time you mind blast and every time you devour and plague those apparitions spawn so it's a guarantee spawn rate at that point and on top of it if those abilities crit you get an extra apparition so that crit got repurposed instead of being an rng playstyle to now more of a guaranteed playstyle more of a consistent playstyle that played so much better and therefore new shadow priest was born and new shadow priest played exceptionally well and that's all i want for blizzard to do for some of the specs that don't have enough 
I guess not the word complexity, but rather not enough mechanics that interact with one another. Damage over time abilities that are plain dots are just plain dots, but if those dots interact off of your other abilities or can give you procs for abilities baseline, then now dots have more of a reason to be there besides just damage, you know? Because sometimes, if, let's say you have a spec where those dots are eventually are just not worth the damage numbers, you just will stop pressing them. But if those dots have extra mechanics besides just raw numbers, then there's still always a reason and a purpose for those dots in the first place. Mastery, there's a lot of classes out there with really bad masteries that are not that useful. So making them more useful or different or scale differently with the class, I think is also a good way to go. So those are some of the things that Blizzard could do when it comes to taking a look at some of the older playstyles that haven't really been touched for a while. I think anything that was designed during Battle for Azeroth probably could get a second look at. It looks like a lot of the specs got updates or facelifts, like Survival Hunter hasn't really... Outer Rogue is in a really good spot, but I wouldn't mind a new mastery that's kind of useful. And there's probably more specs that you guys can name in the comments down below. But I think that would be one of the easier ways to go about it. There's a lot of class changes, obviously, for the balancing and the numbers, but also just the play styles themselves. Like, if they're super fun and they're revamped and they're just more coherent together and there's more intricacies between abilities and dots and such, I think it'd be really cool. But anyway, this video is way too long. Thank you guys so much for checking it out, especially if you stuck out to the end. This is everything that I think patch 9.1 needs to do right in order to be a really good patch it's going to be available on ptr for testing very very soon we'll be streaming it as well as making videos on all the updates in the future thank you guys so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed and as always i'll see all of you guys in another video